today we got to play Merv. This is a worker, touch of worker placement, but it's more of a track, um, track climbing game, really. Yeah, kind of action it's selection. Action selection, and they call, they, the board game geek labels it as economic, which I don't get at all because there's no money no. involved in this game. Uh, city building, which the build, the city is already built. You're building walls around the city, but there's really no city building. Well, technically, you're building buildings. Well, you're putting buildings on, but they're more of your workers, really. I mean, you're. Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's a tough sell. That it's, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's more of a point salad game and, and action, it's action selection, and you know, I don't know, various scoring tracks. Yeah. Set collection. So yeah. um, the theme is is that we are in the Middle East. Um, the Mongolians are coming to attack us, and we're trying to fend them off and do it and be very prosperous, right? And that prosperity obviously is victory points. So, um, going on to game pieces, this is your standard pair of game pieces. You have wooden, um, you have wooden meeples, you have wooden circles, wooden houses, very much what you get in Catan. The only thing that I think is really, um, cool is you got a camel that actually this is a pretty good wooden camel i actually really like this and then the walls are pretty neat um but other than that there's nothing absolutely um i do like the colors chosen for the cubes because it's purple it's uh, uh, yeah it's so i would i would have enjoyed would. having actual orange cubes like we were supposed you to got, have gotten two groups of white but we cubes. got two sets of white and no orange so i've written the company already but as usual my luck, I get a bad copy of the game. Yeah. So um, you use pumpkins instead. So card quality, there's no texture, and it's pretty standard, though, I would think. I don't think yeah. they're thin. I don't yeah. think they're thick. I, but there is no texture to them. There's nothing special about them. Um, cardboard, again, nothing special. Um, I will say that I do like the palette, uh, the color palette for this game. I think it, that piece is very pretty. Yeah, but I think that, it, that really moves towards theme versus quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... What would you guys rate quality though? Um, because I think I'd give it a six because it's just a little bit better than Con. Not a lot, but a little bit. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's just barely above Catan. And then the only reason why I say that is there's I think there's a little more pieces. Well, no, it's the camel tokens. The camel meeples. Right. And the right. walls. And the walls. And the walls, but that's particularly the that's, gates. I thought the gates were Yeah, the gates look really good. Yeah, I think you're right. That those those two pieces yeah. are what make it above better than Gatan. Yeah, I mean, six is a fair score for quality, I think, on this one. So moving on to theme, um, like I said, we're trying to um, protect the city against the Mongols' invasion. Um, I really do think that the art is pretty good. I like the color palette to this. As far as theme, though, it's just a bunch of different tracks, really. It could it's be anything. It's completely layered on. Well, I mean, it's got all kinds of markets. It's supposed to be a, a uh, you know, a Persian market or, you know, I, I get that, Middle but, Eastern, but, but it, anyway, it still market. could be anything, though. It really... But, yeah, you know, I mean, but I, I mean, I think it, the, between the color scheme and the, the color, the, 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 the colors, and, the color is what really pushes yeah, it for me for theme. I mean, it's... Clearly, I mean, any kind of market game is always going to be it. You could trade anything right. in it, but they've. I, I don't think it's. You know, I think they've done a pretty good job of incorporating the theme into the gameplay. I don't think it's extremely light. It's you know thick and heavy, but I think it's decent. My so one of the problems I do have with this game is that the year marker is black and black is a player color. That that yeah that should have been. Change, and actually. honestly, I didn't like the player color choices for this palette that they've chosen. There's no purple, that's what she's saying. No, it's not even that. It's just it's a, a light sky, a black... I, I just didn't understand the color choices for this theme. And I really there's didn't. no purple. And there's no purple. Right. I mean, they really, have purple it's cubes. True. I know, and I happily collected as many as I could. <laughs> But they made me spend them, and I, that really upset me. <laughs> um, so I would actually give this a 7 for theme. I mean, I love the color palette. The art's pretty good. But there's nothing 
fantastic about this game. I think seven's yeah. a fair score. Yeah, I just, at seven's what I was saying. I thought you all were going lower than no, that. But I think seven, seven's I think, is a fair score for this, seeing wise. So, moving on to rules. The rule book is actually pretty good. It's uh, got, you know, good pictures for everything. The, the, we did miss when we first started reading it, but I mean, it's a heavy read. This is a pretty, there, there's a lot going on in this game. It's not an easy game to pick up and play. But one of the things we did miss, and it's in the rules, we just missed it, was the, the when you take an action, you can take it multiple times, you just pay the cost. So we would, the first time we played, we were pay, paying actions and playing actions at first where you just got it one time. And as it turns out, we found out halfway through the game that you don't, you can actually play it more but the rules did clearly state it we just missed it but there's it's easy to miss because there's uh you know it's, it's only 18 pages but it's a heavy 18 pages of rules i mean they're pretty it small it sounded font. complicated when you were trying to read yeah it, it, it was there's a few parts i had to go back and reread a couple times just to make sure i got it down but once you actually start playing it all cemented it wasn't that bad i mean it, it, it there's a lot going on in the game which we'll get to in gameplay, but it, it's just and the rules did as good of a job as they could of conveying it. I'll well, give think it a it was score bad. then. I'm going to give it an eight. I think it's a decent rule book. It's got a good overview on the back. It's got an icon list. You really don't need a cheat sheet for this because the iconography is pretty straightforward and simple. So having it on the back is sufficient. I, I don't think our cheat sheets are ne necessary in this one. Okay. Moving on to claim play. Randy, what did you think about that? I personally loved it. I, I didn't know I was going to love it as much as I did. Uh, there's a lot of options in this game. So just to go over it, we've got several scoring tracks. And basically you have four paths on the, each side of the city. You start on one. You take an action by moving to the end point of a path. And you get to do anything you trigger in that row that has your color House if you it, choose if you choose that row you can choose no, one of the opponent's yeah. colors yeah. as well but you'll trigger all of the color whichever one you choose but you only for an opponent you'll only trigger any bonus action tiles they have on the buildings except for the building you chose uh, if there's not a building there you place one of your building color on the building and you get the resources for that building and then you can take that building action, or you have the option of raising yourself on, I don't know if it's called the fate track or whatever, you can give yourself one level up, or you, you can place a soldier to protect that plot or another plot that you place a soldier on from the Mongols when they strike, which they won't strike until the second and third era. You play three eras in this game and it's over. Um, the... Other, the, other than taking the actions from the track, the, the different choices you have as far as actions are based upon the tiles you have. And you have city walls, which lets you build walls to protect the, the, the city. You have the mosque track, which lets you get various bonuses for moving up the track. And when you get to the end, you can score a lot of victory points from that. Um, when you've got the market, which it will give you the products you need, which they come in brown and blue varieties. To complete orders, and the orders are a good way of scoring victory points in this as well. Uh, you have the uh, camel track, which lets you get cards, which is set collection. You, there's four different varieties of spices, and you can collect the different spices to get up to ten victory points per set. Uh, those you can those are driven by this influence track, which is based on how many. Whenever you build walls, you get these influence. So these two go together: the walls and the camels um, and these this will set how many different spices you can have and so you can't get a full set of four until you get far up on that track then we have the palace which is basically end of round scoring which you can score there's three rounds so if you can get there early you can score a lot of points assuming you max out on those tracks and then you have this the, the uh, scrolls and the scrolls are used also for filling uh, the different projects that can be done, or contracts, I should say. And also, they give you kind of in-game bonuses that you can use for actions. So you have lots of different ways of compiling points in this game, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, I like the mechanic of moving around the board and getting an action for the row that you got and your production for the row you choose. So you can maximize your production by getting a lot of your own color 
And obviously, if you, you can see the board, Red has done a really good job in this game of that. Uh, they managed, which was Miranda, she managed to win this handily because she got production out the wazoo every time she went around every Y'all space on the board. Do it. Um, so, you know, the, the, there's a mechanic of mastering the placement of your buildings in the city. You've got, but then you've got to decide which tracks am I going to focus on because there's there's no way you can do everything. So, so I will say, big thing, focus on two tracks. Like yeah. that is really the way you're going to go because, like I ended up, um, this allows you to bounce, so it helps build another track, and like this one also feeds into this track. So like I focused here, and then by subsequent I also well, they up can't here. see where you're pointing. So you're 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 just demonstrating the mosque. And the walls, right? Right. So, you know, and, the, and I think that's the thing. But then, like, the market's really good with these cards over here. And if you added the spice route to go, you could really mix and match. So I think it's just do focus. I think when we first played this game, we played this twice. The first time, it was just like, oh, let's do all the things. When I don't think that this game, that's how it was meant to tra- tray. It's like a track, you know, going along the track game. And so that mm-hmm. makes you focus. So... Rob, you've been awfully quiet. I didn't like the game. So now, <laughs> granted, I've only played it the once, or you guys played it twice. But I thought there was, I thought it was kind of boring. Um, and then not only that, it was just too much. Uh, it might have been because we didn't understand the rules as uh, like you guys did later on, and how some of those actions, like being able to do multiple times, could have made a difference if I had known that at the beginning versus. I don't even know if I if I knew it by the end of the game myself. You did because he took. He, you, we, yeah, that's right. Because I did the wall a couple of times, but just I, I I don't know how to really convey. It just I didn't care for my first playthrough. I thought it was a little bit harder than what I was anticipating. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, but uh, a little bit of AP, not knowing what to do and how to do it, uh, got to me a little bit. Um, just overall, just I, I didn't care for just playing the game. So um, for me, there are a lot of tracks, and um, there are like a set collection, also uh, special powers that you can get, and it is a busy board. Now I will say they did the board very, very well, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of options on the board, and it can be overwhelming um, until you figure out it's a track game. And then you focus on the two tracks that you're going after. And, you know, and I don't think it's so much about protecting your cities. I mean, there's a little bit of that. Obviously, you need to do that. But I don't think it's nearly as important, especially if you can bribe them. So if you've just got enough resources, you can just buy out um, the, the Mongols. So with that being said, I see where you say it's a, there is some, I don't know, it just wasn't that exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, there, there wasn't a lot of tension to it. Um, what would you guys score? I was really taken by this game. I liked it a lot more than I thought. I, I think I'd give this one a 9.5. It wasn't quite perfect for me, but it was right up there as far as the style of game I enjoy, which is lots of ways to score, lots of trying to figure out what is the best path for me based upon the actions. Uh, you know, I, 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 just, I don't find it boring. I found it very interesting because I was engaged just the whole time trying to figure out what could I do. And, and when people took the action tracks, it you know it would frustrate me because I'd have to change my path. But then I would come up with a different strategy on what I was going to do based upon the options I had to me available to me. So I didn't didn't bother me at all with any analysis paralysis or you know the dryness of it. I thought it was interesting the whole time. What do you think? Or what, give it a score as well. Well, you know, if we use Katana as our base uh, answer at five, and I ask myself, do I like this more or less than Katan? I like Katan better. Uh, I, it's, I just, I don't know why. I just do. So I cannot score this any higher than a five. But this is, again, one playthrough. There's a lot to this game. There's a lot of meat to it. Now, if I play it several more times, I might grow into it. And really like the game, but for right now, initial first thought, it's five. Um, I am not at a nine point five, and I am not at a at a five. Um, I am somewhere in the dead heat. I think. Um, 
because the reality is there is a lot for this game. If Randy says, let's play it, I love this game, I'll be like, sure, let's play it. It's fine. Get it to the table. Um, but is it something that I'm I'm going to choose as my pick for game night? I don't think I will. And so I think I'm dead heat. So I'm going to give this an eight. Um, it's really solid. It's a good game. There's a lot of tracks. If this is your kind of game, I think you're going to love it like Randy did. Um, I, if you ask how to make this game better, I can't think of anything except somehow make it a little more exciting. Um, other than that, it's a good solid game. So that's where I'm at. Any other comments before we wrap up? Uh, one thing we you, you got touched on earlier, and I think it's important, is the, the board design was done extremely well. Top notch, it, guys. It's very, Top notch. It's, ve it's got a lot going on in it, but if you look closely at it, it is segmented very well. You can easily differentiate all the tracks. There's no commingling or concern about this being bleeding into that. It's very well di yeah. di differentiated. Ian O'Toole did the artwork, and you can tell. It's got his fingerprints all over this game so he did do a good job with the artwork and uh he was probably involved with the design as far as the graphic design as well so yeah because i feel like some of the games we played recently have very cluttered boards and it's like eye numbing this wasn't the case for that game so i think this that was spot on so who else do we have to credit for this so uh this is uh the full name of the game is merv the heart of the silk road uh vgg rating 7.9 Designers Fabio Lopiano, artist is Ian O'Toole, published by Osprey Games. MSRP, it's a little pricey. It's a $65 game. Uh, you can find it a little bit cheaper on some of the other uh, websites, but that's just without a discount. It's $65. All right. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We had a blast tonight. Hopefully, you'll join us again. If you want to hang out with us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We'd love to hang out again. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye.